Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. So that being you said, let's say, for example, we were looking at creating a straddle on the CDD, and as you can see here, as of uh, on Monday, the CDD was actually trading at 105. Now, the CDD reflects the U.S. dollar as a base currency against the Canadian dollar, so we're, in fact, trading our directional views on the U.S. dollar and whether we think it's going to go up or down against the Canadian dollar. Now, the um, the in this particular scenario, we may believe that the the uh, CDD has been particularly range bound over a certain period of time, and we we feel based on our market outlook or based on on our currency outlook that there has to be a move. Something has to give. In other words, this particular pair value can't trade sideways forever. They can do it for an extended period of time, but at some point you would assume that a decision has to be made uh, with respect to a, a breakout in either one direction or another. So looking at, that, looking at it from that perspective, we would um, look at the two-month 105 call options, uh, which are asking $1.92, we would also then take a look at the two-month 105 put options, which are asking $1.64. Now, there's always going to be a discrepancy in the call options versus the put options in terms of their pricing. So you'll never uh, ever find yourself in a scenario whereby, the, um, by, whereby the, the call and the put options, both of the same strike and expiration month, are going to be trading the same because of the other factors influencing the price of the option contract. But recognize in this example, as a month, Monday, uh, this was the, these were the prices of, of those particular option contracts. So what we could do essentially is buy a 105 call at $1.92. We could then go in and buy a 105 put option at $1.64. And the, uh, the net cost of that, uh, of that position is $3.56. Now, um, this represents the maximum risk of that particular uh, of that particular uh, uh, strategy. Now, uh, John just had a question. It's a little more advanced uh, for some folks, but why would you want to sacrifice the gamma uh, by splitting your ex uh, expirations? And that would be referencing the uh, the impact that a stock movement is going to have on the delta and the impact on each of the option contracts. Uh, 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 respectively based on a stock move. Well, John, my rationale under those circumstances is that I don't have a neutral bias on the stock. I'm not expecting a move either up or down. I have a directional bias uh, that extends uh, out maybe four or five months, and I want to hedge my, my immediate risk by using a near-term option contract. So my, my rationale is not to make money uh, on, uh, on the... Um, on a, uh, a move to the downside, for example, it's more so just to offset uh, the immediate risk of, a, of a, an adverse move while still looking to participate uh, in, a, in a longer term extended move out of the um, out, um, to the upside o over a certain period of time. So um, that would be my rationale uh, with respect to splitting the uh, the expiration uh, dates. Uh, hopefully, that sufficiently answers your question. Um, but in this particular scenario, uh, once again, we're looking at buying the 105 strikes. So we're buying a 105 call, 105 put. Net cost is going to be $3.56. $3.56 um, reflects the maximum risk on this particular strategy. Now, we have to uh, recognize that because we've purchased the um, because we've purchased the uh, the um, both the call and the put option here, the cost of this transaction is uh, is going to be that much more than if we just simply had a directional bias and bought uh, either the call or or the put separately. So, in order for us to determine the break even point on expiration of this particular trade, we have to take the entire value of that position and add it uh, to the uh, a 105 strike of the call, um, which is uh, equates to 108.56. We also subtract it from the 105 strike of the put to determine our downside 
break even. And you can see that it's 101.44. So what this suggests to us is that if we look to hold this position from now until uh, the expiration date, we would need the pair value to either be above 108.56 or below 101.44 for us to make money. What we have to realize is that we do not necessarily have to hold this position um, out until expiration. We can also make a determination throughout the life cycle of this particular uh, trade as to whether or not we want to offset the uh, one side uh, early and uh, and and recapture as much of the uh, of the premium that we've paid on that one, and then continue to uh, to enjoy profits on the continuation of the trend in the uh, in the other direction. So we don't have to hold this position right out until uh, expiration. We can uh, manage it throughout the life cycle of both these option contracts to um, to essentially reflect a particular directional bias once the uh, once the move's underway. But that being said, here's a uh, a chart of uh, of the uh, of the CDD here, and um, as you can see, uh, what we would be looking at is in a sense um, buying both a 105 strike call and the 105 strike put. You can see that the stock was essentially, or the stock, sorry, the the pair value was essentially trading within this range. Um, at the time that these uh, these prices were uh, were actually um, uh, were actually um, looked at, and you can see that our break even points on this particular transaction uh, appear as though they're quite a ways away. Remember that um, that ultimately uh, that is um, that is uh, because of the fact that uh, we're looking at it based on the uh, the the expiration. Now, um, I, and I think maybe that uh, that uh, references uh, Sal's question that it's a far out upside profit area. Uh, it, it's above the range over the uh, few months. Um, so the idea is that uh, that this would have been perhaps a nicer trade uh, um, back when the uh, pair value was around 103. Uh, the 103 level, and and absolutely, I mean there are uh, there are certain. Um, there are certain uh, uh, elements of timing that one needs to, uh, you know, really look at when it comes to establishing these types of uh, transactions. But I would uh, argue that if the um, uh, uh, trading in and around that 105 level, uh, looking particularly at uh, at what uh, the CDD is doing from a technical perspective, um, we have uh, 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 once a move to the upside is underway, the the uh, 108 to 110 range is uh, is very attainable. Similarly, we know from uh, past uh, historical uh, references that the um, that the CDD has also traded down uh, towards the uh, the par level, and uh, and so uh, at this point we're really more or less mid range between 110 and mid range between 100. Now. What we have to recognize, of course, is that I've illustrated the profitability of this transaction based on expiration. But what I want you to, to recognize is that if a move to the upside is underway immediately, understand that, uh, that the rate of, uh, of profitability will be accelerated in the, in the call side. You'll still have, uh, you'll definitely see a deep depreciation in premium on the, on the put side. But if you're confident that the trend is underway, you can offset that, that put position and, uh, and continue to hold on to that call position. Uh, and what you've essentially done is you've you will have lowered your break-even point on that transaction once, uh, once this put option is off the table. Similarly, you can do the same thing if the, if the move uh, is underway to the downside. Uh, ultimately, what you can look at doing is offsetting that call option early. The other consideration, of course, is that um, if you, um, you you are considering, of course, the net offset value of this particular transaction. So, in other words, you may be losing somewhat on the put side, but that call option, uh, based on an expansion of volatility and, and an appreciation in the premium, based on the uh, intrinsic value being generated, um, should net out the um, should net you out a, a profit even though you haven't reached uh, your break-even point. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. 
ISE FX options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.